Hey folks, today we'll talk about the demand equation. So we know that there are lots of similarities in mathematics and economics, especially with linear curves. So in mathematics, we all know the famous y equals mx plus b as a epitome of a linear curve. We also know that in mathematics, this y is a function of the slope of x plus the y-intercept. So if we were to put some numbers, let's say y equals 2x plus 3, we could then graph this as such, where we have the x-axis, 0, our point of origin, the y-axis. Our y-intercept is 3 on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3. And we know that the slope is rise over run, rise two times, run to the right once. 4 and 5, 1, 2 to 1. And now we have our linear curve as such in mathematics. Now in economics, it is similar but also different. In the case of the demand equation, we are going to be focusing on Q sub D, which would be the demand quantity, is a function of B minus AP which would be price. Now, I want you to see that we have different letters that we are using. We have B, which represents the X intercept. And we have A, which represents the inverse slope. If the slope is rise over run, the inverse slope is run over rise. Secondly, we also know that Q on any economic graph is on the x-axis, P is on the y-axis. So we're going to have, in, essentially, x is equal to B minus AY. And it would make sense. In economics, quantity depends on the price. How many you buy depends on the price of that good. And that's why we have Q sub D as a function of the x-intercept minus the inverse slope of price. Thirdly, I want you to focus on the relationship between quantity, demand, and price. We see that there is a negative sign. So there is an inverse relationship between quantity and price. And that would make sense for demand. As the price of a good increases, you consume less. As the price of a good decreases, you consume more. There is an inverse relationship between quantity and price. And that's why we have a downward sloping curve. Now we can also use a graph to illustrate the demand curve. And the cool thing about economics is we could also model consumer behavior based upon your preference. So here we can put zero, x-axis, put here quantity, price on the y-axis. And now we can look at the equation once again Q sub D equals something. Now let's say that you are really into lattes. Lattes at Starbucks. And if you're like me, I'm going to use 10 minus P. If the price of a latte is zero, that's how many lattes I would want to consume. Maybe in one hour, maybe in one day, maybe over the course of a week. 
but that's my own consumer behavior. For some people, it might be less, it might be one, it might be three, it might be five. But for me, if the price of a latte is zero, it's free, I want 10 lattes. So now we can go ahead and graph this on our graph. So here we have 10 as our x-intercept. And the x-intercept is over here. So now we can put... So if 10 is our x-intercept, here is our x-axis, that's 10. And now we see that we have an inverse slope of negative 1. But now we are going to run and rise. But since this is negative, we're going to run to the left. That becomes 9. And rise 1. And now we can label that there and connect the dots to give us a linear curve. In our case, what we call the demand curve. And that's how you would find the demand curve. That's why we see a downward sloping curve because of the inverse relationship between quantity